Released in fall 2019, Atelier Riser is the latest title in Gust's long-running Atelier series, releasing on PS4, Nintendo Switch and the PC thanks to Kui Tecmo. The Atelier games are titles that I've wanted to get involved in for a while now, and I felt Riser was the perfect place to start. In this series of videos I move away from my beloved Falcon titles and try out JRPGs from other developers before giving my opinion. In the case of Atelier Riser, this means I will be coming into this game with a completely blank perspective. As of recording, I have sunk over 37 hours into the game and have been playing on version 1.03 on the PC, which apparently has fixed some technical issues. Outside of a few momentary freezes, the game never crashed for me and maintained a decent level of stability throughout. I also played the game with a 360 controller, so some of the prompts I mention may differ for you, and I'd also like to mention that this video will have minor spoilers for the first hour or so of the game. With Atelier Riser marking the beginning of a new sub-series of games within the universe, let's see if we can answer the question, is it any good though? The game begins by introducing us to a group of childhood friends discussing their day-to-day -day frustrations. It's here where we meet Rizalyn Stelt, shortened to Riser, a daughter of a farmer's family who clearly has no love for the life of agricultural labour. Instead, she's pining for a big adventure, which she readily conveys to her two friends, Lenz and Tao. Eventually, Riser decides to go to the island's port to take a ship to the mainland, and the player is given control. Now I'm going to say it, as a person who has never played an Atelier title before, this game had an awful first impression on me. As a side, I normally like to watch the opening of a JRPG to give me a feel as to what I'm going to be experiencing in the game, and it doesn't help that said opening is janky as all heck. I'm not trying to brag, but I don't think my PC specs should be struggling with a JRPG of all things. NPC dialogue is scarce, and many of those who don't have it you can just walk straight through as if they phased out of existence. The cutscenes are a bit odd to get used to as well, as the aspect ratio decides to go cinematic, and instead of having a flowing scene you get what feels like a collection of smaller scenes pressed into one. Compounding this issue, the cutscenes have a habit of jumping every now and then, and I can only assume that this and the opening's issues are due to the PC port not being optimised well. Invisible walls are all over the place, and you can only save by interacting with Riser's diary, which thankfully allows you to fast travel to later on. But hey, at least there's no odd clip here. Oh no! Now of all that said and done, you would probably think that I hated this game, and it was a slog for me to push through. That could not be further from the truth. I enjoyed this game far more than I thought I would, and that enjoyment is tied to the game's unique selling point, which is introduced in due course. With the docks blocked by island guardians, Ryza mentions her secret weapon to circumvent this issue, her own personal dock with a boat, which allows the three of them to make the short journey to the mainland. Deciding to waltz into the nearby forest, they happen upon a blonde-haired girl under attack who they promptly manage to save. The rescuee, Claudia, expresses her gratitude and the four travel together to a hidden clearing where some tougher monsters corner them. Outmatched by these foes, they decide to try and figure out a plan of escape, until an unseen duo grenade the creature's Schwarzenegger style. Amazed by what she has seen, no doubt spurred by the splattering of weasel body parts all over the area, Riser implores the man to tell her what he just did. His reply is that he used the power of alchemy, which Riser finds herself immediately enamoured with. In light of her newfound interest, Riser tracks down the duo in the island's Old Town District, and from here, the game introduces its most compelling mechanic. From this point, you start to realise that Atelier Riser, or Atelier games in general, are quite different from other JRPGs. The series capitalises on something that many other games either do a bare-bones job on or just completely ignore, and that is the alchemy system. With alchemy, you're able to create a myriad of items for your journey, be they items for crafting, healing items, weapons and armour. By working through a synthesis tree and utilising the correct materials, you can create an item with a selection of traits and effects. This system is great as it gives a lot of player freedom to build how they want. You're not mindlessly putting in materials, you need to think about trade-off as your ability to create in alchemy is tied to your alchemy level, which dictates how many materials you can put into a single synthesis. 
As you progress further in game, more options start to open up, like weapon forging, gem reduction, and one of the most important, item rebuilding. The game does a solid job of explaining the system to you, taking baby steps from mechanic to mechanic, though I will admit that some of the explanations are lacking. For example, I was about 20 hours in before I even realised my traits were locked and I wasn't getting their effects. But to be honest, I was too focused on the basics of alchemy at this point in time. And let me tell you, this system is ludicrously addicting. I spent far more time on this than I should have. There were many times where I was sat down late at night and would tell myself, Okay, one more synthesis. And before I knew it, that one turned into another 30. It's compelling to see what you can create and how powerful you can make an item. Recipes within your alchemy arsenal can also be synthesized in such a way that you can find more recipes, which leads on to even more recipes. Add on to this quests, merchants and treasures that can additionally give you more to work with, and before you know it, you're just chilling at the atelier rather than working on the main story. However, what I love the most about the system is that it is tied very closely to progression in the game, in that you need to understand it or you're gonna get stomped by the enemies in the later areas. You can level up in the traditional sense in Atelier Riser, and while it is somewhat important to get the minor stat improvements that come with doing that, it's more pressing to make sure your equipment is up to snuff. More often than not, you won't be buying weapons, armour or items to use in battle. Instead, you'll be getting the materials that you can use to make said items. High level traits will require materials with the same name in order to level up, which you can then transfer to your item giving it the much needed stat boost from its base effects. Of course, this need to upgrade is applied to the items you use in combat as well, as in some cases your most powerful means of attack or defending comes from your inventory. Bombs, jellies, remedies, they all stem from alchemy and thus you need to make sure that they are fit for purpose for the later areas. A small heal that served you in the first 10 hours is not going to cut it later on, so you'll either need to make something from scratch or rebuild the current item to a decent level. So we've talked a lot about the crafting system, but how do we actually go about making items? Well, you're going to need to gather a lot. Riser and her posse can traverse the world and any flashing node can be harvested for material. This sense of progression from alchemy even extends to gathering, as you can create more gathering tools to give you various ways by which you can harvest a node. For example, a bush can be sheared with a scythe to get leaves, hit with a bug net to get insects, or smashed with a hammer to get its essence. <laughs> The more materials you get, the more options that open up for you, and if you keep it up you'll even get access to previously inaccessible areas, which is a nice reward for your work. Now with all of this gathering you might be thinking that it sounds like a chore, but honestly this was not the case. It was enjoyable to traverse the world that Atelier Riser introduced, and there were a few reasons for this. First of all, the aesthetic of the world. The initial reason why I was drawn to Atelier Riser was because of the cutesy style it sported. One of the very first JRPGs I played and subsequently loved was Eternal Sonata, and Riser used a similar style to this. The worlds are lush and vivid and impactful colours evoke the mood of the game. Sprawling vistas of meadows or beautiful coastlines are a staple and there are many times where I just enjoyed running around to take it all in. This charming look translates to the characters' designs themselves, as each member has an attire that ties in with their background. For example, Ampel is an alchemist, he's gotta have a monocle. Lent is a fighter, he's gotta have an... 8-pack? Needless to say, these gifts translate to the other characters as well in varying ways. Another praiseworthy trait of the game lies in its soundtrack. Coming from Falcom Games, I've always maintained that Sound Team JDK makes the best game music around and thus it takes a lot for a soundtrack to hit the right tune for me. <laughs> I'm happy to say that Gust have done a superb job with the OST. It kind of has a jazzy feel to it with saxophones, flutes and a decent use of percussion to get the player in this sort of relaxed mood as they play through. I was having a blast with these tunes, especially the later battle themes. And talking about battle, let's have a look at the inevitable combat you'll have to partake in. Atelier Riser strayed from the previous entries in the series by introducing a real-time combat system. An action bar shows on the left and when the character's portrait reaches the action stage, you can choose what said character will do. Attack, cast a spell, use an item, or flee like a coward. 
The player gets control of one character, so the other two members will attack automatically, but you can change their aggression level with a simple use of the D-pad on a 360 controller. However, you can still freely move your active control to each character if you want to capitalise on their action for that turn. Talking about capitalising, supporting characters will issue orders to the one you control, and fulfilling them will yield a special attack, which can be useful to break an enemy's posture if they are close to unleashing a powerful technique. Initially, this system was difficult to get used to, but after a while, it felt oddly genius. You're not spamming buttons or using your most powerful abilities just because you can, you're watching all aspects of the battle. Do you go for the extra order or do you increase your tactics level? Or would it be better to attack and then use a quick action before the enemy's turn? It's like alchemy in a way, you're trying to find the best mix to claim victory, and with all of these elements in real time, it makes for a compelling and enjoyable battle system. However, what isn't too compelling is the story you're playing through. Of course, it's centred around Riser, her friends, and their desire to go on adventures. As such, the narrative is somewhat lacking. First of all, the side quests which are sprinkled throughout the world while enough to keep you busy normally boil down to one of two things make something to solve the problem, or talk to a set number of people in the town. I can count the amount of times it deviated from this on one hand. I understand it's the main mechanic of the game and such they want to involve it in some way, but I would have liked something a bit more... innovative. Like for example, send me off to some far off place to get some long lost recipe as part of an epic quest chain, make me feel like I earned this reward rather than asking me to make free cloth of a certain quality which I just so happen to have on me anyway. The main story suffers from the same drawbacks. The premise is okay, but I feel it suffers for two main reasons. Primarily, the pacing feels off. There are times where you'll progress in the main story, and then it will tell you to wait for three days, or wait till tomorrow. If you've been doing a lot of extra content in between the main objectives anyway, you'll most likely just be going straight to bed to get to the next event. I would have preferred if they just gave the next objective to push the story along, leaving it to the player's discretion whether they want to proceed or not. It doesn't help as well that there are these random cutscenes that show up every now and then, which in some cases can feel really out of place in light of what your current objective is. For example, I need to see Claudia for a chat in order to push the main story along, but she's right here with me. Again, the pacing suffers because of it. The second reason why I feel the story is a bit flat lies in the characters themselves. For the most part, therefore lack of a better word, one-dimensional. Riza wants to escape her nagging mum, Lent wants to become stronger, Tao wants knowledge. It's good enough motivation, but there's not really any underlying struggle there, anything that has shaped them into who they are. But I think that mundane nature fits the mood the game is trying to show, it's simply a group of childhood friends looking for a way to spice up their normal life, and I can relate to that. I will say that I enjoy the interactions between the group, it's light-hearted and enjoyable to watch, and also if you want more depth to these characters, you can partake in the episode scenarios that are accessed through the main title screen. They're short events where you get to see more adventures of the group, though they'll normally focus on one or two members, and they do a good enough job for what they set out to do, though I will say, it's probably better to do these after you finish the game, as some of them give spoilers to upcoming areas or events. Overall, I'd say this story is passable. Nothing special, nothing terrible. With all that said and done, I think it's time for us to wrap up. At the start of the video, we tried to answer the question, is Atelia Riser any good though? After playing 37 hours, I can say with conviction, yes, it's very good. Atelia Riser is a unique experience for those looking to break away from the traditional formulaic approach of other JRPGs. You won't get a compelling story or deep characters, but in exchange, you'll get an addicting and intricate crafting system over the backdrop of a charming aesthetic. As said before, this was my first foray into Atelier, and I fully intend to play more of these games in the future. I can see why they have such a dedicated following. In lieu of fast-paced action, you're encouraged to take things slowly, experiment and try new things. It allows you to relax and enjoy your experience, and at the end of the day, that's what I want from a JRPG sometimes. Instead of being the chosen one or overthrowing gods, there are moments when I just want to kick back, 
and join a group of friends on a wholesome adventure.